All right, let me ask you a question. Can emotions be wrong? Now think about it. Can they be wrong? A lot of people say yes. Some people say no. Now, the issue here then becomes really not so much what we feel, but more of what we're doing when we feel certain emotions. And that typically is what makes an emotion wrong. All in all, really emotions are never wrong. The emotions that you feel are what you feel, and sometimes you can't control that. Sometimes you can't control how you feel. Sometimes something happens, and it happens so quick, you don't even have time to think about it, and an emotional response happens right away. We can't control those initial thoughts, those initial emotions that pop into our head. But what we can do is we can control what we do when we experience those emotions. And that's what we're going to spend our time talking about today when we talk about the brain. And over the next few days when we're talking about skills of how to strengthen our brain so that we can have better control when we feel those powerful emotions and we can do some things different. I'm sure all of you guys have had some situations where you look back and you wish you would have acted differently when you were under the influence of a powerful emotion. Emotions like anger, emotions like fear, emotions like love. Emotions like frustration, um, all those emotions can cause us to make some pretty stupid decisions. And so what we're going to do is we're going to really talk about the stupid part of our brain and we're going to talk about the smart part of our brain. Um, and how do we exercise those parts of our brain to help us react the best way we can in any given situation. So we're going to start off with, we're going to look at the brain. The brain's up on the sh screen right there and the brain's made up of a bunch of different parts. So the first part is, let's see if I can get my my brain to work here. There we go. Cerebrum. Uh, the cerebrum is what we call the gray matter. It's the biggest part of our brain and that's where like the senses are, um, the uh, memories, all those kinds of things um, are usually located and made up in the cerebrum. The back part of the brain, uh, the lower part and the, and the way back part of your head back in here is called uh, the cerebellum. The cerebellum is responsible for things like coordination, movement, balance, things like that. That's why in sports, when you get hit in the back of the head, that's what usually causes people to uh, be dizzy, to be wobbly, to, to lose their balance, to go unconscious, um, all those kinds of things. Because the back part of that brain gets jarred, and it causes uh, some, some problems in terms of, of how our coordination works. All right? The next part of our brain is what we call the brainstem. And the brainstem is the autonomic part of our brain. It's, it's all the stuff in our bodies that happen automatically, like your heartbeat, like um, your digestive system, um, uh, those kinds of things. You don't really think about that stuff. You're eating the pizza and you swallow it, you don't think about it again. Um, you know, it, it moves through your digestive system and your stomach. You don't think about the stomach acids. You don't think about all that kind of stuff um, until it's ready to come out. And then, you know, <laughs> you might have to think about it real quick, but that's a whole different ballgame. But for the most part, that's what's happening in the brainstem. It's all the autono autonomic stuff that you don't really uh, think about or consider. All right. Now, what we're going to talk about are two other structures that are located in the midbrain, the middle part of the brain, and that's where these structures are located. The main player that I want to talk about is this thing called the amygdala. The amygdala, say it with me. I know it's a funny word. Amygdala. Try it. Say it. Amygdala. All right. So the amygdala is part of the fight or flight uh, response. That's what it's responsible for. It's for quick action. All right. I'll give you an example. <laughs> See, that's what the amygdala does. All right. When something happens, your brain immediately goes into action, and that's your amygdala taking over. Now, some of you, your heart rate's got to come down a little bit. All right. Um, and, and that's going to be part of what I'm going to talk about in a little bit. But that's what the amygdala does: is it uh, jumps into action immediately. All right. Some of you probably hollered, some of you jumped, some of you fell out of a chair, uh, some of you might have might have like reared back like you were going to punch the screen, all right? But that's what the amygdala does. That's its job. That's what it's supposed to do. Now, the problem is, is that when we don't train the rest of our brain to keep that part of our brain in check, that's how we react to everything, that knee-jerk reaction. The minute someone says something we don't like, we react. The minute that someone says something that hurts our feelings, we react. The minute that we deal with a stressful situation, we react, okay? And, and we've got to learn that those things aren't going to kill us, all right? It's, it's not a tiger attacking us. It's not, a, it's not a, you know, a rattlesnake that's jumping out of a crevice at us. Um, it, it, we're going to live through it, all right? Our bodies can't differentiate between emotional stress and physical stress or, or an emotional threat and a physical threat. It can't differentiate between the two, so it's going to react the same way to both. And unless we train our brain how to react the proper way in the proper stress, it's going to automatically go to that, that, that amygdala 
that that stupid part of our brain that's just going to react and it's just going to do do do. <laughs> he said do do. <laughs> so that's what we're talking about with the amygdala. All right. Now the amygdala the amygdala controls some things. The the arousal sense that we have when we get excited about stuff that's the amygdala. The fear response that you just experienced that's the amygdala. The emotional responses how we deal with anger how we deal with with um uh you know, depression, all those things, that's part of the amygdala. And then these hormonal secretions, especially adrenaline and uh, some cortisol, uh, that's another stress hormone that's released. There's some other stress hormones that are released by the amygdala that, that basically help body processes uh, happen quickly. Um, and in all actuality, the amygdala will release some hormones that will take hours to get out of our system. And that's why we can't think clearly when we're dealing, especially with things like anger and fear, is it may take two, three hours for us to finally calm down enough to really look at a situation and say, man, I should have done this instead. This would have been a better decision. Uh, you know, there are people sitting in jail that go through that where, where it, it was perfectly logical for them to react in the moment at that time. And now four hours later, five hours later, sitting in a jail cell, they realize, that was a stupid thing. I shouldn't have done that. Um, you know, there's, there's all kinds of examples of that. And that's what the amygdala does is it's only concerned about immediate quick action. All right. That's just it's it's, uh, it's just quick and dirty. That's all it does. Quick and dirty. It's going to do something quickly. And that's what gets us into trouble. All right. So let's talk about what keeps it in check. And that's this thing called the prefrontal cortex. All right. I think it's also called the neocortex, but the prefrontal cortex is, is the big part of the midbrain, and it sits over the top, if you can see right there on the picture, right above the amygdala. And its job is conscious thought. This is, this is problem solving. This is decision making. That's what the prefrontal cortex does. As we grow, <coughs> as we grow the prefrontal cortex gets stronger. All right, technically. And that's one of the big problems with the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex relationship is that the amygdala is fully ready to go as soon as we're born. Uh, we see that in little kids. You know, when a little kid isn't happy, you know it. A little kid wants a toy at the grocery store. He throws a, a hyper fit in the middle of the grocery store aisle because he wants that box of, you know, Cocoa Krispies or he wants that toy that's, that's on the shelf. And mom says no, and he freaks out. All right, that's the amygdala. All right, he doesn't have the prefrontal cortex developed enough for him to say, you know what? Maybe next time I come to the store, I can get a ball, or maybe maybe I'll go home and get some, you know, my money I've been saving up, and 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 I can get the ball then, or maybe I'll just go home and play with a ball that I have there. Little kids don't have that that strength in their prefrontal cortex yet. Now, as they get older and they learn some of that stuff, their prefrontal cortex gets stronger, and so we develop it as we age. Now, we may not develop it if we never exercise it. Are there adults out there that have a very weak prefrontal cortex? Absolutely. It's something we have to exercise. Now, even though our brain isn't made up of muscle tissue, it works a lot like a muscle where the more we use it, the stronger and more efficient it becomes. And that's why things like school, studying, even doing problem-solving games, you know, crossword puzzles and things like that um, are very good for our brain because it keeps, keeps it challenged and it keeps it growing. All right. And that's what's helping in that sense with the prefrontal cortex. Um, so as we mature, we start to learn how to behave in different types of stressful environments or different types of emotions, usually based on trial and error. We've done some things. We've gotten in trouble. And most of us have learned I'm not going to act like that again. And that's part of building that prefrontal cortex. Um, but that's what we need to do as we age is we need to keep that engaged. And we're going to learn strategies of how we keep the prefrontal cortex engaged so that the amygdala doesn't hijack the entire brain, which is exactly what it does. It will take over your entire brain. The brain shuts down. It lets the amygdala be in control because the amygdala says, we, we got to react. Boom, 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 boom. All right. And, and that's what gets us into trouble because most of the problems that you're dealing with is not a tiger trying to eat you. It's not a snake trying to come out of a crevice to, to bite you on the hand. Um, you're going to live through it. Um, <clears throat> and a lot of times when we don't let that prefrontal cortex grow, you know, Someone says something to it, it hurts our feelings. Boom, we want to react. Um, somebody, uh, you know, bumps into us in the hall. Boom, we want to react. Okay, that's that's the amygdala. All right, that's immature brain. That's the what we call the reptile brain. Um, that person that bumped into the hallway isn't trying to kill you. They're not. They're not trying to. Uh, they're not. They're not trying to to kill you. It's not a tiger coming to eat you. All right, it's someone who bumped into you in the hallway. And the prefrontal cortex should kick in and say, hey relax. It was an accident. It's no big deal. Um, everything's fine. Maybe you can say something to them. Maybe you can say, excuse me. Maybe you could let them know that you're there. 
You know, those are all things that the prefrontal cortex does. The amygdala doesn't do that. The amygdala says, punch them. That's what the amygdala says. All right. Um, but we've got to learn how to control that. And those are the strategies that we're going to learn about uh, in, uh, over the next few days is skills, how to strengthen that prefrontal cortex to keep the other part of our brain, the amygdala, in check. All right. So don't stress out. You're all right. You're not going to die. There isn't a tiger trying to eat you. Uh, you can come up with options in any given situation that you're in, but we've got to train that prefrontal cortex to do its job. All right. That's what we're going to learn how to do next.